So last time we were working towards creating a fully functional version of the classic game Pong. And we have some things that are working, but there are clearly some things that we also don't want to be hap happening. So let's go ahead and start adding some things. So let's add some behavior to ball controller so that something will happen when the ball collides with the paddles. So it's going to look like this. So right now we have behavior if it collides with the walls. Let's create behavior if it collides with um, an object named player or an object named enemy. So it's going to look very similar to if it collides with the wall, but there are going to be some key differences here. <laughs> okay. So now what we're saying is if the collision, uh, if it collides with a game object named player, then we want it to... Uh, we actually want that to be negative one. We want we want this to we want it to not move towards the player anymore. We want it to move towards the enemy, and we just want it to start moving uh, right towards the enemy. So negative five point zero f. This is towards, and let's go ahead and add the same behavior, but kind of for the opposite z direction. When it hits the enemy, this time we want to make towards player one. We assign a value. So make sure you save that, and we'll go ahead and uh, open this up in Unity. See if this works just like we thought. So after we've edited the collision function, you'll notice that the behavior of various things in the Unity project will change. So if you press play, now when the ball collides with the paddle, it will change direction in the Z direction. So if we press play, Now when the ball collides with either of the paddles, it will go in the other direction. Let's, uh, to test this out with the enemy controller, or the enemy paddle, let's quickly attach the player controller script to enemy, and try again. So let's make sure it works when it bounces off of that. All right, good. So right now we have no way to keep track of the score, so let's go ahead and make a new script so go to create C sharp script and call this one score. So let's make edits to the score script. So we'll start off with just some quick reformatting. Um, so we're going to make two instance variables. Uh, one is player score, and we're going to initially assign a value of zero because we want each of the player score and the enemy score to be zero, which I think makes enough sense. So then we're going to make a public method. It's going to be important this is public later. So public means that this can be accessed by um, any other script, and that's going to be very important later. We're going to put an if statement in, so if player type is equal to 1, we're going to increase player score by 1, and if player type is 2, we're going to increase enemy score by 1. 
Then we're going to make another method called on GUI. So GUI is an acronym. It means graphical user interface. And that's anytime we have something like a menu or anything that a player is interacting with, uh, that's called a graphical user interface. So to construct it, um, there's a lot that goes into graphical user interfaces, but we're going to be doing something very simple. All we're going to be doing is creating a scorekeeping, a couple scorekeeping labels in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. So we'll say GUI.label, and we're going to make the label, we're going to put it inside of a rectangle. So graphics work a little bit differently uh, on computer systems, and it's a little odd. So the upper left-hand corner is still the origin. That's the 0, 0 spot. But as x increases, we still go to the right. But as y increases, we're actually going down. So what this is saying is when we're constructing this rectangle, so when we construct the rectangle, as we increase, so in a computing system, the, the origin is still in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. As we go more towards the right, that increases the x component, but as we go down, that actually increases the y component. That's kind of like flipped over the x-axis, it's a little different than what we're used to. Uh, the, th the third parameter of the constructor is the width of the rectangle, and the fourth parameter of the constructor is the height of the rectangle. Then we'll just uh, construct a string. To, be our to give a value to our label. So we'll say player score, and then we will, we will convert this instance field player score to a string. And we're gonna do this, let's just copy and paste this. We're gonna do the same thing for the enemy score. The only difference is we want it to move down. So let's make this, let's make the Y component of our constructor 40. We'll change it to enemy score, and then enemy score dot to string. All right, so let's see if this works as intended. So make sure we, so before you do anything else, attach score to the main camera. All right, that looks good. And then press play. Let's see what happens. So now when it plays, let's see what happens when it goes past the enemy. So nothing happens quite yet because we haven't given it a condition under which we should increase the score. So now we're going to go back into the ball controller script and we're going to be using uh, a method that's a little strange. So inside ball controller, inside the update method, we're going to put a conditional statement in. So we have to have to, we have two possible scenarios. The ball goes past the enemy paddle, and the ball goes past the player paddle. So we know the ball goes past the enemy paddle when the Z position of the ball is greater than 10.5. So what we want to happen is, this is kind of a, a lot of things that are going to be happening here. So we see gameObject.find, gameObject.find main camera. So we're going to be using the main camera object as our, or the, the game object with the name main camera is going to be our reference object. Dot get components. Score. So what this does is we're going to get the component called score in the object with the name main camera. 
and then in, and then we're going to call the method inside the script score called increase score. And we're going to pass one, and that's if you remember in the score script, when we pass a parameter one into increase score, that increases the player score by one, which is what we want to happen when the ball goes past the enemy paddle. Um, then we're going to call the start method, and what that does is going to bring. And that's going to move the ball back to the center of the screen. Well, it's going to reset our variables and uh, transforming the position back to uh, zero for the X, Y, and Z components of the ball. We'll move it back to the center of the screen. For when the ball goes past the player paddle, let's go ahead and just copy and paste that but we're just going to change this to be uh, less than negative 10.5 F, and we're going to change increase score to 2. So let's save it and see what happens when we play it. So when the ball goes past the player score, you'll notice that enemy score increases. So let's see what happens when the ball goes past the enemy paddle. And sure enough, the player score increases and the ball goes back to the center. So right now, we just kind of have a pretty uninteresting game because there's really no artificial intelligence. So let's go ahead and add some artificial intelligence to the enemy paddle. Let's go ahead and make a script called enemy. Let's make a new c -sharp script. We'll call it uh, enemy controller. So in, inside enemy controller, we're going to make, we're going to declare a variable. We're going to make ball a public game object so that we can access it. And we're going to make our script called ball controller a variable that we can use. So we'll call it bs underscore script. Inside start, we're going to assign a value to bs script. We're going to get. So now we want to get the component called ball controller and assign that to BS script. Inside the update method, we're going to say if BS script dot tor. Well, actually, what we're going to do is we're just going to say if ball dot transform dot position dot x is greater than transform yo know, is greater than transform dot position dot x. So basically what this is saying if the ball is to the right of the enemy paddle, we're just gonna have the enemy paddle move towards the ball in the x direction. So we'll instantiate a new vector so the only uh, component we want to change is the x component. So we'll change that to transform.position.x, so the current x position. And we're not going to change the y and the z component. And next we want to add another if statement that's going to look very similar, but this time we're only going to consider when the ball is to the left of the enemy paddle. So this time we basically just do the same thing, except now we say if the position of x is less than of the ball is less than the position of the paddle. And this time we're going to make a new, we're going to have it move to the left. So we're going to say minus 0.2f. So if we save that, 
Press play. Ah, so we want to attach the script first. So in if you click enemy, let's remove the, the script called player controller and let's attach the script called enemy controller. So if you attach that, let's see what happens. So now, So now the enemy paddle will move so that it's always sharing an X position with the ball. Now this is actually pretty boring, um, and this is kind of like an issue when creating games with uh, designing good artificial intelligence. So you have to kind of make sure that your artificial intelligence is good enough where it's interesting enough to play against, but it's not so good that it's impossible to beat. So this would be an example of a script that's simply impossible to beat. So clearly there are a lot of things that can be improved about this and I'd like you to I'd like you to think about that and when you're working on the lab I'd like you to think about at least three things that you think could be improved about this and then try to actually implement those improvements.